All right, this is going to be a bit controversial. So hopefully you guys will stick me with me for a minute. Uh, we've been doing a lot of vintage cube drafting on Magic Online. It's vintage cube season. And one opinion I hold that I've held for quite some time is that Storm should not be included in the vintage cube. And I know to a lot of people this is sacrilege. Um, Ryan Spain, uh, who I believe is, I want to say creative director. I'm not sure if that's the correct title, but... I believe he's the creative director of Magic Online currently, and he's responsible for many of the changes that you see in the cube. One of the recent changes was bribery was taken out of the cube. I'm a big fan of bribery. I think it's very cool. I think there's a lot of counterplay to bribery. I think bribery is not just a card where you lose on the spot a lot of times. There's been numerous times where I'll bribery, and either A, my opponent doesn't have good creatures to hit, so I take something like a Mole Drifter. Five mana for your opponent's Mall Drifter is good, but not great. Or they'll have an answer for it. Specifically, they'll bounce it. They'll snap it. They'll cryptic command it. They'll mystic confluence it. Something of this nature. Then they get their own creature back, and I spent five mana casting bribery. And finally, the other thing is you can just sideboard out against it. There's tons of times where I'm playing a ramp deck and I take out all the cards I would absolutely hate to have played against me. I still leave in things like Primeval Titan or I don't want to say Hornet Queen. I think Hornet Queen's probably pretty good. But cards like even Woodfall Primus is a card that you can kill and then you get it back. So it's not like the end all be all, right? I think bribery is a lot more reasonable than people give it credit for. And it's five mana, right? It's not two mana. I think it's it's a five mana spell. It's very, it's expensive for a vintage cube. But it, this was taken out because it was said that it leads to unfun play experiences and the vintage cube is not meant to be a card museum. And by that, it means it's not meant to just showcase powerful historic cards from Magic's history. It's meant to elicit a fun play experience. You're supposed to have fun when you play the vintage cube. And I would argue that I never have less fun than when I'm playing against Storm. And I have very specific reasons for this. And the reason, the main reason, is the lack of interactivity, especially in game one. You have to sit there. I played, I played yes, eh, not yesterday, I guess it was Saturday. I played two drafts, or I played one, we'll say, we'll, we'll stick with one draft. I did one draft in the second round. I spent about 20 minutes sitting there waiting for my opponent to storm off. This also happened in the third round. It wasn't as egregious, but it happened. And my problem with this is it lacks interactivity, which I mentioned, but it also monopolizes both the fun and the time of the round. It makes magic so that one player is playing the game and the other player is, player is watching them playing the game. As someone who is streaming at the time, this is only compounded. I only feel worse because people are watching the games and just sitting here waiting for my opponent. And it's one thing... If the, the argument I keep making, it's one thing if you lose the game on the spot, like channel or bribery. If they bribery in an Emrakul, you don't have an answer, you're done. You can concede. You can go to the next game and keep playing magic. But if someone is storming out against you, it takes 10, 15 minutes. They have to keep going through their library. They they time twister again. They look for more spells. They they time spiral, they untap their lands, they cast mana morphos and dig through their deck. And you're just sitting here watching this. And a lot of main deck cards are not just designed to beat Storm. Like, that's just not a thing. Just because of the way the mechanic works. <laughs> like, you can't counter 19 copies of Tendrils. It just doesn't, there's nothing, that, there's no Fluster Storm in the cube, right? And even if there is, it's often not going to be in your main deck, right? That's a sideboard card. You're going to bring that in against Storm. But the, the point is, it's not fun. It's fun for one player, and that's it. And that's the biggest issue I have with it, is that you're sitting here watching someone play Magic, whereas, like, at least with these other cards that are meant to, to, to not be a fun play experience, those cards let you continue playing Magic. You can go on to the next game. There's a sense of hopelessness that you feel when you're playing against Storm. And it's because you don't know if you're going to win or not. Or you, rather, you don't know if they're going to, to, to fizzle or not. If they're going to mess up. And there was even a time in my second round where my opponent was like, Oh, no, I messed up. And I was like, Oh, cool. 
And then they kept going and killed me. They didn't mess up that badly. But the problem is you never know. So you can't concede. I would love to concede like with Splinter Twin even. I will even use Splinter Twin. An archetype I think is extremely powerful as an example. And I will say that with Splinter Twin, if they put Deceiver X Sarker Kijiki on the board and then they put a Splinter Twin, not, not Deceiver X Sarker Pest and Riot, and then they put a Splinter Twin or Kijiki on the board and I'm tapped out, I'm going to concede because I know they've won. The game has ended effectively at that moment. That's not the case with Storm. You have to sit there and you have to wait. You don't even know what, what win condition they have. I had two Eldrazi in my deck as well. I had an Emrakul and an Ulamog at the time. Both of them shuffled. So if their win condition is Brainstorm, I could still win. Not win, but maybe not lose, right? We could still we could still win the Storm Lottery in the sense that we survive it. But I don't know. Is it Tendrils? Who knows? So that's another problem right? You're not incentivized to concede when your opponent demonstrates a powerful combo when the combo is storm, when your opponent is storming out. And so you're just forced to sit there. You're forced to sit there for 10, 15 minutes and just watch your opponent play magic by him, by themselves. And while I get that that's fun for them, it's a waste of time. And this is the same reason like Sensei's Divining Top was banned because it's a time sink. It wastes people's time in a game of magic and it makes the experience less fun. It's the same reason Second Sunrise was banned because people don't want to sit there and watch you do something for an extended amount of time while not doing anything of your own. That's not how magic works. Magic is not a solitaire game. And additionally, another point I want to make is that I took storm out of my own vintage cube. I have some combo pieces that let, let, let you make infinite mana. I have a brainstorm in my cube as well, in case you want to either use it on your opponent or even use it on yourself. And then you can Thassa's Oracle and kind of win that way. It's kind of like mini storm, but there's 25 cards that I think make up the, the primary storm package. And I would argue that very few of these, not none of them, I think some of them are valuable, but very few of these are valuable outside of Storm. And that list is Baral Chief of Compliance, Brain Freeze, Echo of Eons, Gitaxian Probe, Gush, Mind's Desire, Palancron, Cabal Ritual, Dark Petition, Tendrils of Agony, Wishcloth Talisman, Yogmoth's Bargain, Yogmoth's Will, Burgi, God of Storytelling, Desperate Ritual, Empty the Warrens, Mana Flare, Past in Flames, Pyretic Ritual, Seething Song, Goblin Electromancer, Manamorphose, Lion's Eye, I think I missed up, <laughs> Lion's Eye Diamond, Lotus Bloom, and Lotus Petal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, Yes, yeah, 25 cards. 25 cards that could just be taken out of the cube. Lion's Eye Diamond is not seeing play outside of Storm. Tendrils of Agony, obviously not seeing play outside of Storm. Mana Flare. Empty the Warrens, Desperate Ritual. None of these cards are seeing play outside of Storm. And granted, some of these might not even be in the current iteration of the cube, but there is some combination of these cards that there's very little overlap. It's not like you're seeing Brain Freeze go in multiple different decks in the cube. It's not like you're seeing Yogmoth's Will in multiple different decks in the cube. These aren't versatile cards that are filling multiple different roles in cube decks. I mean, it's just, it's not a thing. <laughs> Like, Lion's Eye Diamond, you're not playing this unless you're playing Storm. Mana Morphos, it's cute. You might filter your mana a little bit, but, like, it's ultimately just a Storm card that can't trips. The same thing as Gitaxian Probe. Both of those are just literally trying... Or, like, I mean, Gitaxian Probe you may play in, like, a combo deck where you want to see if it's safe to go off or if you're just degenerate and you want to just play 59 or 39 cards. That's totally fine. I get that. It's a great card. But a lot of these cards don't have a lot of depth. They're very shallow. They're very linear. And that's the problem I have because it, they take up so many slots. I can't think of a single other archetype in the cube that has this many cards that lack any sort of like redundancy or overlap with other archetypes. It just doesn't exist. Palancron is even removed from the cube. And like, there's so many of these cards. The other day I just took like a 12th pick tendrils. And I'm like, unless you're drafting storm, this card is blank. Like, no one plays it. It's not a thing. So, in my cube, 
I have a Wooberg package. I have a five color package with a bunch of cool five color spells. And I, I try to support the five color theme. I have Garth one eye, Jared Carth, Carth the lion, Gigantha, the wellspring, Jensen Carth, the lion, uh, the Kami war two headed Hellkite, which is super cool. Omnath locus of all invasion of Alara dryad of the Elysian grove, chromatic lantern, timeless Lotus, Ren and realm breaker, and then I have a bunch of maybe cards as well that might make the cut, but they're not currently in there. Like a Sika, God of the Tree, or Jota the Unifier. Widespread Thieving was in there for a little bit. But like this is this is 12 cards, and they're half as many cards as Storm. And then I get to add 13 other cards if I want to in my cube that I'm just not that are just not storm cards currently. And it just opens up a lot of cool playable cards that you can add to the vintage cube that are not in there currently. Like I can tell you that there's tons of cool stuff from like Warhammer 40k or Lord of the Rings or any of the new sets that are coming out that I would love to add. I think they would be super cool in the cube, but instead you have like lion's eye diamond and Lotus petal, which are fine. They're historic. These are historic magic. These are like the definition of card museum cards where these are cards that are only in there because of storm but they also do have that kind of historic magic pedigree. But like, I'd rather have bribery than Lion's Eye Diamond. I'd rather have bribery than Tendrils of Agony or Yawgmoth's Will. I don't know. Maybe I'm alone in this. Maybe this is my my feeling, my, my, my unique feeling and no one else agrees. And I, I get that. That's fine. Like I said, it's a controversial take because I know a lot of people love Storm. But the thing is, it's not fun unless you're the one storming. It's just not like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how else to explain it. Like, and some people said, well, like, do you have a problem if I have to get up and pee or go to the bathroom? And I'm like, no, not at all. Because that's just a human function that everyone has to do. Like it, the issue is not like, I don't want to sit here for any second longer than I have to, because I'm just unwilling to do so. That's not the that's not the issue, right? You're not playing magic while you go to the bathroom, and neither am I. I understand. I I am I'm a human being. I can, I get that you have to go to the bathroom. That's not you're missing the forest for the trees there. But like, yeah, I, I mean, like other combo, it's not it's not a power level thing. It's not a uh I don't want to wait for any amount of time thing. It's the amount of monopolization that Storm specifically takes up in a game in the vintage cube. And for some people who don't have a ton of time to vintage cube draft, if you play two rounds against Storm, it's just not fun. You've basically watched the other player take all of the game actions while you took very few. <laughs> and, you know, I could have spent 35 minutes in that specific that specific draft I was referring to in another draft, but I couldn't leave it. I had to sit there and I had to wait for this draft to end and I had to wait for my opponents either storm out or whiff and you never know which one, which one is going to happen. That's just how it goes. That's the nature of storm. And I think that's unfun. I think if we're talking about play patterns that cards produce and we're talking about the fun level and we're talking about the vintage cube, not being a card museum, I think storm has to go. It's not a fun archetype. It is an archetype that lets players solitaire and it is sanctioned by, you know, whatever, whatever cube designer is putting it in their cube. Like that's just how it is. And I personally, I think that's frustrating. I have been known to draft storm occasionally back in the day, but I rarely do it now because I don't even find the cards fun. There's a puzzle that you're putting together when you play storm. And I, I really appreciate that. I think that's the best argument I've heard. People like putting that puzzle together. They like taking all the pieces and finding out what works and putting them together in such a way that they can make enough mana and draw enough cards and get through their deck and play a card with storm so that it ends up killing you. And I get that. I understand it. But if you want my opinion, all of magic is a puzzle. The whole vintage cube is a puzzle. All 540 cards building a deck playing the matches. It's all a puzzle. That's why we love the game. And I just don't think Storm needs to be a part of it. These are my two cents. I would love to know what you guys think. I know I'm going to get some some Storm purists in the comments. I'm also I know also know I'm going to get some people who absolutely hate Storm. So let me know what you guys think. Let's keep it civil. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate you.